Hi guys. So I'm taking a break from studying for my exam that's at 4.30 to make a video because I just have something that I really want to share. Um, something I've been struggling with a lot, which means if I'm struggling with it, there's other people that are struggling with it. So I just want to share because I've learned if you share, people relate to you. So don't be afraid to share with other people your problems, your struggles, etc. Um, so something that has just been relevant to my life is I feel like I've been very consistent with um, praying, getting in the word, um, really spreading um, God's love to other people and just being like consistent with that and um, being intentional and not feeling like it's an obligation, but... Um, just really getting almost in a routine of just doing it like that is my lifestyle now and I've just really been struggling with maybe not that God owes me anything like I'm not saying that but I feel like we all kind of feel like why do I feel like he's not um blessing me the way that I thought he would or um how long do I have to wait for things? Like, I'm trying to be patient and I'm trying to be faithful, but why isn't XYZ happening? And um, that's just something that I've really been struggling with. And I kind of think, sometimes I'm like, this is God's time of, like, testing me, even though God doesn't really test us, um, to see if I'm going to stay faithful to him. And um, so yesterday I was just completely exhausted I had reached my max on everything and even last week I said you know I'm really bad at saying no to things I just always want to say yes I always want to be able to do everything for everyone and I just felt like God was saying Mason you need to be able to say no so say no take a break like you've peaked and um so yesterday I just I knew I had this exam today I just had a whole list. I had something to do in every single one of my classes. I was just completely overwhelmed emotionally and just physically. I just could not go anymore. So I went into work and I just was not there. Mentally, I was not useful to, to my work. So I just said, I have all these midterms. I have all these exams. I have these pres this presentation. Can I? Pl is it okay if I leave? And so I did. And I came home around 1230. And I was like, you know, I need to get all this work done. But if I don't lay down and take take a little bit of, a, like, a break, I'm not going to be useful to myself. Like, I just need to stop because I go 100 miles an hour all the time. I do. I get up at 6 a.m. and I go until 11 p.m. And I just, I needed to take a break. So I laid down um, on my couch and I was like, you know, I just, I don't want to watch TV. I don't like watching TV. I don't feel like it's productive. But I was like, I'm going to turn on a Michael Todd video um, to fall asleep to. So I went on to YouTube and I found, I was watching Grace Like a Flood series. Great series. Check it out. And I just clicked on the, I just clicked on like the first video that popped up. And it was like week eight, week seven or week eight of Grace Like a Flood. And it was called Sustained Grace. And I was like, hmm, interesting. Well, this video, I was like falling asleep to it, but I, I almost didn't even sleep because it was just so relevant to everything I had been feeling, everything that is just so important to understand because here's, here's what it is. We as Christians and as followers of God, love to point out saving grace. Um, we love to see someone get saved. And that grace is so good because we we want people to come to God and we want people to find a relationship with God and be saved. And so we love to throw um, big parties and like make a huge deal of someone um, finding that relationship because that's amazing. It is. And we shout and we cheer. But um, this this talk that he did, this this week's message, 
was on sustained grace, and he was talking about the people. He said, what about the people that have been faithful and that have been living the life that God has asked them to live, not necessarily perfect, but have accepted Jesus into their life and have been trying to live that life for for a long time. Um, why why don't we celebrate them? And um, why why do we feel like, you know, Susie over here just accepted Jesus into her life last week and now she's getting the husband she always wanted, she's getting the promotion that she's always wanted, she's getting the big house, the car, um, the degree, things like that, and we are over here kind of judging and wondering, like, God, you know, that's what I've been praying for, that's what I've been staying faithful and wanting, like, why haven't I been given that, and I've been faithful for X amount of years or for so long, and, um, and we tend to be judgmental, or we tend to get frustrated and wondering, like, why doesn't God see us? Or where's, like, we look at them instead of ourselves and wondering, where, where's, where's my grace, you know? So he covered um, sustained grace and knowing that um, the what he talked about was Luke 15, which is, like, a very famous... Um, uh, story in the Bible about, um, sorry, I just don't want to mess it up, but it's about the two brothers and how their dad is like super wealthy. And so the one son says, dad, like I want my wealth now. So the dad splits up the wealth and the one son goes and spends all his money and spends it on prostitutes and things like that. And the other son stays home and remains faithful to his dad and um is working for him and and all these things and then the other son is so broken he's slaving away because he's lost all his money and he comes back and they throw this huge party for him because his dad says my son's back he's been saved and the the son that never left is very upset that he is there and um they're throwing this party for him because he's never had a party th thrown for him and the dad says, like, we have to throw a party for your brother because he's been saved. Um, but everything I have here is has always been yours. And that's just, like, the, the point that Michael Todd tried to make is everything God has is yours. Um, you just have to see it. You can't view yourself as, um, an, like, a nobody. Like, you are a somebody. And um, so one thing I liked about like the sustained grace was, well, let me back up to the story. This, the son that has always stayed home would not go into the party. Um, so the dad came outside to him to talk to him because he was so upset. And that right there is God showing grace. Um, is like, that's kind of how I explain it is that is grace. That is the sustained grace. Like we still have grace in our lives every single day. Obviously, that that is what God gives us is grace. It might not be this huge saving grace of um, being saved, but the, God shows us grace in everyday things, in the little things versus the big things. So that's the sustained grace that we get each and every day. And I like I liked the um, the simile, I guess you could say, or metaphor that Michael Todd used of. You know, saving grace is like fireworks. So we do have these huge parties um, for people and we like to celebrate people being saved. But the people that remain faithful and we don't throw parties for, um, you or me, we're the fire and um, we're the match and we keep burning and we keep remaining faithful because with that, what a firework can't happen without a fire. So God does see us and he knows that we're faithful and he is going to provide for us but but we have to we have to stay faithful and keep working hard and trusting God and that he will provide for us when the time is right um he see, he he truly sees our obedience and he does not want to give us all these blessings until he knows that we are ready to handle the overflowing amount that he's going to give us. And I really like Galatians 6, 9. 
Um, it says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessings if we don't give up. So in the times we feel like, man, like, God, I've been praying for this future husband over and over. And like, why, why can't I have him yet? Because that's something like I've been struggling with. Um, just like continual faith and trust in God that he is going to provide my husband for me when I am truly ready to take on the best husband that God is going to place in my life and in my heart and that my heart's going to be ready for him and his heart's going to be ready for me and just having that faith and like in the meantime I'm that fire for all these other fireworks that are happening like I'm the reason that God's allowing me to be the reason that other people are coming to Christ and that's just so cool so like you are the this the um your consistency is allowing other people to be to have saving grace. So um, another thing Michael Todd said is if you are a person that is staying faithful and you feel like um, maybe the sustained grace is relatable to you um, in your obedience, throw yourself your own party. You don't need confirmation from anybody else that you're living the right lifestyle. If you know that you're right with God and you're being faithful to him, throw your own party. No one else has to tell you you're doing it right. It's between you and God. So throw your own party. So I thought that was really cool. Um, like, oh, one thing I wrote in my notes. Sorry, I was, like, writing about this last night. Um, one thing I said is, why would we grow weary seeing other people being saved by grace? We should be just as excited about that as knowing that how sustained we are in grace. So I thought that was really cool. Um, I said, I will continue to be a burning fire so that those around me can be fireworks. It's not even about me. It's about God anyways. So God has allowed me to be a fire um, so that people can have fireworks. So if you want to think about it that way too, um, you, you were once a firework, so now you're a fire. So... The people that are fireworks that you're seeing, someone once saw you as a firework. So let celebrate the people that are fireworks so that they can become a fire for someone new to become a firework. I know I'm using that a lot as a metaphor, but it's just, it makes sense to me. Um, um, I just was like praying and I was just like, thank you for this understanding um, to God because it was like really hard. I just, I could not grasp um I, I was having trouble grasping it and just knowing because something I've literally been praying for every night is this future husband and just like because there's like a specific person and just like remaining faithful and knowing that God is either going to bless him, bless me with him in my life or he's going to give me someone better. It's just like really hard, but just knowing that he will, he will provide to me and I just have to um, not give up and I just have to continue to stay faithful to God and trust him and know that he he's the almighty like he has so much power and so much control and so much love for me that he sees my obedience and he sees everything I'm doing and um, everything I do is for him so that's just like really cool um, so I just wanted to share that for <coughs> sorry for anybody else who feels like they're just like in this consistent routine and like maybe you feel like is God ever going to give me this thing I've been praying about for eight months? Yeah, he will. And it might not be in two months. It might be in a year or five years. And um, that's the thing. You you don't know, but God's faithful. So just know that. And um, he does provide grace in the little things, but sometimes you miss it because you're so focused on the people that are getting saving grace um and and don't be judging the people that are being blessed with like the marriage and the promotion because that might be their saving grace to come to God like someone might get get this like perfect husband but if they didn't then they might may have never found God and like you're already there with him so now he's he's waiting for that other person to like come into your life that kind of didn't make sense but 
just know that you cannot compare yourself to other people and you cannot judge other people because God has a perfect plan for you and he has a perfect plan for them. So keep your eyes on God and everything's going to work out just perfectly great. And I'm preaching to myself just as much as I'm preaching to you, but it's just always good to say. All right. Well, I need to stop talking because I need to go study for this exam because senioritis is such a real thing in college. It's not even funny. But I love that it's March. It's almost spring break. I'm so excited. I get to go serve the Lord down in Panama, Florida. Um, so I'm super excited about that. Um, I hope you guys have a safe and fun spring break because I probably will not make a video before then. So I probably won't be on here until the end of March. We'll see though. We'll see. Um, have a great rest of your week. Um, stay humble. Stay happy. And how you feel doesn't determine how you act. See you guys later.